This is the plant called cucaracha, cockroach in English. This is a very important plant. It's a very important medicinal plant. It's very small. You will find several of them in a lilac color in different sizes. And you can use the powder extracted from its plants and while mashing them to cure or heal skin rash and leprosy. In the internal part you will find some liquid and you can apply that liquid in your eyes when you have eye irritation. You have to apply this liquid in your eyes repeatedly every morning to heal your eye irritation. Your eye irritation will be completely gone. This is the caulote tree. Its scientific name is Wasuma uinfolia. It has a very important property. You can cut it with the machete, put the bark in a container and four or five days later you can drink the liquid produced from the bark and it will help you to eliminate all kind of infections that you may have internally, especially kidney infections. Besides its healing property, this bark can be used to make rope or cords for works on camping grounds. This plant's uh, common name is hobo. You can see it's a little bush, but eventually it will grow to become a big tree. Its leaves have a very important property. When people have problems caused by parasites or worms in their stomachs and intestines, the leaves of this little bush can be processed or, say, blended and drunk in raw form to help them eliminate these parasites you will be surprised that their taste is nice, it's acidic. This plant will really help you eliminate parasites. This plant, called campo, is a small bush. It's a very interesting plant in this field. These plants have very interesting and useful properties. When somebody here in the region is bit on the hand or foot or anywhere else by a snake, particularly the lens head pit viper, the most dangerous snake in all Petén, if you don't get medical attention or an antidote immediately, you can take its roots and mix them with the roots of this other plant. These two are what we call male and female plants. Different classifications, but same family. You can take the infusion made out of these plants and it will help you fight the venom, avoiding it to affect your bloodstream so you can get to a hospital right away. Here we have a small decorative plant that is very interesting. Let me tell you why. Nowadays, many people collect the palms of this plant so they can sell them abroad. They grab the palms like this and using a cutter, they collect approximately 35 palms and they sell them in order to make an income if they are unemployed. To do this, they need to go into the jungle for a while so they can collect lots of plants and make a living and support their families with these plants. This is interesting as this plant is a source of income for these people in the region. We call this plant Chate Embra, which is female chate, and we also have the other class, the chate macho, the male chate, which is bigger, and we will find it during our hike. Here we have a plant commonly known as quina. 
It is a very important plant because of its healing properties. The plant's roots are utilized to fight the venom of the lance head pit viper in case of a bite. You have to administer the roots as a serum to a bitten person right after the accident and in case you don't have any other antidotes so the venom doesn't kill the attacked person. The healing properties of this plant really save lives. This is the Ramon tree, measuring more than 12 meters, 39 feet in height. Its bark is very thin, but its wood is very strong. It produces a fruit like this one, maybe usually bigger than this one, and in the internal part you can find a very important seed used during Mayan times as an important crop. The Mayas collected these seeds during good harvest periods and stored them in the natural rock formations, what we call chultunes. In these chultunes, they usually stored these seeds and other basic grains of their diet that could stand tough summer and winter seasons. Whenever their corn crops were scarce or bad, they fed themselves with these seeds. They would cook the seeds to make atole, a drink very high in proteins. This is the palm. In the archaeological Mayan areas, you can see this tree as a decorative item in their streets and plazas. This plant produces an orange-colored fruit, which is eaten by toucans. Toucans, magpies, pheasants, you name it. Palms have very poisonous parts. Any person who eats these parts, the parts that will become the new palms, might die. The fruit is pretty soft and the birds eat its shell. The seed is very hard. And it takes just two to three months to produce a new palm out of this seed. As you can see, the trunks are cylindrical, they're very hard, and other trees can grow over them, like the strangler tree. The palm won't die if it's being strangled by this strangler tree. This tree is not exactly a tree that people exploit too much nowadays. In this zone of Guatemala, the region of Petén, people use a machete to cut the tree in order to extract the resin and collect it using a container on the bottom. The name of the tree is Chico Zapote. After collecting the resin in the containers, the resin will be cooked in order to create blocks or bars of gum, which is chicle, that later will be exported and processed into bubble gum. Bubble gum was produced using the resin of this tree. During the Mayan age, this tree was widely used since its internal part was very consistent and it was used to make vaulted ceilings and lintels. Nowadays, you can find the Chico Zapote wood in some structures like rooms and small houses as well. Right here we can see a tree that we call the liana. 
If we know somebody that has some kind of stomach problem, like an upset stomach, we will make an infusion with this liana, which is named pimienta, the pepper liana. With that infusion made out of this liana, that sick person will improve and will normalize his or her stomach functions. Now, we will cut the liana with a machete and we will see something pretty interesting inside it. In the transversal cut of the liana, we can see a cross, right? That is the Mayan cross. This liana is also called the liana de la cruz, or the vine of the cross. But nowadays we just call it the pepper liana because of its nice peppery aroma. From this liana we will make an infusion for the person with an upset stomach. Here we have the tayo, a common kind of tree found in the Petén region. You can see that it's covered with thorns. This is a protection system of the plant. Termites here in these thorns can build their homes in a symbiotic relationship with the tree. On top, we can see palm leaves that can be used for domestic chores. Housewives make brooms with these palms so they can sweep their floors and clean their homes. Here we have two flowers from the tree known as huevo de caballo. And here is the tree, commonly known as huevo de caballo or horse testicle. When ancient Mayas performed some of their ceremonies, they used these flowers and they extracted the pollen out of them. The pollen is found in the flower only if the flower is still attached to the branches. They combined the pollen with other natural products and inhaled it as an hallucinogen in order to get high, in order to get drugged. This is the aguacatillo tree. It belongs to the family of the Laureaceae, in Spanish aguacataceas, which is the same family of the aguacate tree, in English avocado. The bark has healing properties on people who suffer from sexual impotence. The bark can be cooked or boiled and the infusion can be drank before breakfast and before going to bed. This infusion will boost the person's sexual stimulation.